Hi, I'm Putt Putt. I gotta go to the parade. You need, I need like 50% more bit crushing on my voice though. Like, hi, I'm Putt Putt. I'm gonna join the parade. Anyway, Putt Putt Saves the Zoo is an A. This game rocks. And the thing is, it's not even, there's like better games. I think I might be skewing the scale a little bit here, but this game's great. It's a fun time. From a game design perspective, it's like, it's definitely not the best one, but it's great, it's an A. Freddy Fish 2, also a fucking A. Some people don't like this game, I don't know why, it's great. I definitely didn't like the first Freddy Fish game. I didn't like most of the Freddy Fish games as a kid, but Freddy Fish 2 is one I liked, and going back to it, I see why. It had like a darker vibe than the rest of them. It was like, sort of scary. Not that scary. Oh, this is from Pajama Sam. Speaking of Pajama Sam, Pajama Sam, no need to hide when it's dark outside. S for Sam. S for Sam. Oh yeah. Pajama Sam, the first one, is so fucking good. If you want to show a human being, like, if, no, if somebody's never played an adventure game before, I think unlike any of these games before it, if you gave them Pajama Sam and were just like, hey, play this for your first adventure game ever, I don't think it would feel patronizing. I don't think it would feel like... I think it's just a fun game that you can play and play as your first adventure game and it can you experience all of the wonders of the adventure game genre in a way that is accessible to anyone of any age. And that's what Ron Gilbert was going for when he started the company in 1992. And I think five years later, Pajama Sam successfully, like, successfully and fully fulfilled that mission. Moving on, Putt-Putt Travels Through Time is kind of a dud. This one's a B minus for me? I honestly don't like Putt-Putt Travels Through Time that much, but it's better than Putt-Putt Joins the Parade. So it gets, oops these up it gets a b minus not a c plus a b minus i'm really <laughs> i'm already kind of playing fast and loose with these categories here also would this be better if i did it full screen no because i think my face would cut some of it off then oh we can do that is this more legible? It might be. Uh, let's move on. So, Spy Fox. Oh, S for Spy Fox. Hell yeah. Spy Fox might be... <laughs> like, is there like an S plus rank? Spy Fox and Dry Cereal is incredible. No, Spy Fox and Dry Cereal is an S rank for sure. Um, there was one little hitch when I went back and played it with one of the quests where I was like... I don't think this is super well designed, but like the fact that I can even get like that level of nitpicky with it, like it, oh, Spy Fox and Dry Cereal, it's just like all these other games are for kids, but this one's for bigger kids. It treats you with a little more respect, both as a player and as someone who can understand jokes and understand bad jokes, which I appreciate. Freddy Fish 3 is an A for sure. Freddy Fish 3 rocks. Can I give Freddy Fish 3 an A+. Freddy Fish 3 is great. It's like a totally different vibe than Freddy Fish 2. And Freddy Fish 4 and 5 kind of just like play catch up to the vibes of Freddy Fish 3. But it's great in a different way than Freddy Fish 2. It's weird to have them next to each other. Because as you can kind of tell by the box art, let's zoom in. As you can kind of tell by the box art, they're very different vibes of games. This one's got a lot of dark and blue. In this game, you know, not only the like, you know, the colorful flowers and the bigger eyes for Freddy, but this is so colorful and vibrant. Anyway. What game is this from? Hello, fangirl. We're doing a ranking. Oh, this is from Pajama Sam 3. Oh, this was made by the Fatman. Any soundtrack by George the Fatman Sanger is a good soundtrack by me. Um, we're in the middle of ranking all the humongous entertainment games, and then we're going to play Gone Home at the top of the hour. How you doing? How's it going, fangirl? Pajama Sam 2. Uh, fucking S. 
S for Sam once again. He's the king. He's the best. Pajama Sam 2. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Oh, nope, I can't. I can't. Pajama Sam 2 is so fucking awesome. I, I can't even, like, I mean, I played it on stream and I, I can't like put it's just great at this point in their career they just like in in the company's collective uh ouvre, as a company they just knew what to do they knew how to make these games they were all good consistently pajama sam 2 is just great it builds on what made the first one good kind of similar to freddy 2 and freddy 3 in that uh hello the vibes of the games are different you once again took something that was very dark, very blue, and added in a lot of purple, a lot of lighter shades, you know, lavender. You got the blue daytime sky in the background rather than the deep blue nighttime sky. But they're both great games. They're designed well, the writing's great, the character design is great, everything about those games is great. Putt Putt enters the race. C. I loved this game when I was a kid. I really did. I told the story about how I got that game for like my my sixth or seventh birthday. Oh, thank you, fangirl. Let's zoom in again. While I take a while I take a little water. Ooh, a Final Fantasy tier list would be fun. I can't do one of those because I'd only be ranking like one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, fifteen. That's a big gap. Crystal Chronicles. Chocobo Racing. Spy Fox 2. I hate to do it to him. <laughs> Spy Fox 2 is a B. I don't know what it is. Because we go from all these games that are great. And then all of a sudden... And again, it's like, it's actually hard. I can't articulate from a game design perspective what happened. This game is just a step, a huge step down from Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo. And it's also a step down from Putt-Putt Travels Through Time. It's a lot more mundane. And there's this silly thing where through the whole game, you have to collect bottles to get coins. But then, um, hold on. I'm getting a message from her. I have to message it back. All right. Um, Final Fantasy 1 is worth playing, especially like a modernized version. And Final Fantasy 3 is fun, especially the 3D version. Oh, so Putt-Putt enters the race. Yeah, it's just like, hello, Loki, how you doing? No worries. I mean, I just got distracted by a work thing. And it's like, it's after, don't, me don't message me. Don't message me after work, so stop messaging me. But I was courteous and messaged them back because I'm nice like that. Um, and Spy Fox 2, so Spy Fox 2, like, I want to be nicer to it, right? Because it's like, Spy Fox is an S. How can Spy Fox 2 be a B, right? It's so... Spy Fox 2 is one of the first games, and I start to complain about this in other ones, where navigating the map is a chore. The location of... And Pajama Sam 2 is kind of like this, but I have fun playing it. But Spy Fox 2 is like, you'll have something on one side of the map, and then you have to go all the way to the other side of the map, and then... To, you have to bring it all the way back to the other side of the map. And I feel like all it does is artificially lengthen the playtime or cause you to start mashing the escape button and skipping all the animations. And the animation is the fun of this game. So if you start training the player to skip the animation, I think you've done something wrong with your game design. Moving on, Freddy Fish 4 is a fucking S. Can you fucking believe it? I can't. Freddy Fish 4, the game where they're cowboys, is an S. It's so good. It had the same writer as the Pajama Sam series, which is probably part of why I like it so much. But it's just like... I don't know. Maybe I should put it... I love it. I had such a good time playing Freddy Fish 4. 
Am I being too nice to Freddy Fish 4? I had such a good time with it. I'm going to leave it at an S. That's a hot take. I don't think a lot of Freddy Fish fans would say that 4 is the best one. But that's my hot take, and I'm going to stick to it. Pajama Sam 3 is an A. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an S. But it's also not in the B category. Pajama Sam 3 is an A. And... The only reason I'm down on it is because Pajama Sam and Pajama Sam 2 are both s rank games. They're both incredible point-and-click games for and uh, like that are accessible to beginners or children or players of any age. Pajama Sam 3 is also those things, but it's kind of a step down from them. It's something in there... It's got that problem where navigating the map is tedious, but it also it feels like something's missing. There's something there that... Like, Pajama Sam 1 he's a, is all about fear. Fear of the dark. And then Pajama Sam 2 is about being afraid of weather. Specifically, thunder and lightning. Pajama Sam 3, instead of being about Sam conquering his fears, it's about him learning a lesson. And he learns it pretty poorly, which is kind of why I like the game. The game ostensibly is about how he's supposed to eat healthily, but throughout the whole game, he just eats so much junk food. So, I love it, but it is, it's a little, to me, it's a little lesser in its design and its storytelling than Pajama Sam 1 and 2. Putt-Putt Joins the Circus is an A, which for a Putt-Putt game is high praise. Putt-Putt Joins the, I'm going to leave it like this. Putt-Putt Joins the Circus is the bomb. It's so good. When I was a kid, I was kind of over it. This game came out when I was, I think, 9 or 10. So I was aged out of 3 to 8. I love it. Oh, I'm missing chat. Sorry. You had a taco for today? Hey, I had tacos today too, by the way. That's awesome. I had uh, smashed black bean tacos. And I made some for my partner and put some like coleslaw and pickled onions on there. But I don't like those things. So I just had it with black beans and cheese and uh, some crema. Basically just like, and cilantro. I need to eat some vegetables or my body is going to turn into a bean. I'm going to become a Fall Guys. Or even worse. And Among Us. Oh, who was I playing with last night? It's his birthday even. I gotta shout someone out. Um, I'm, I gotta get their Twitch name right. Ominous Invoker. I think it's I think it's that. Yeah, I was on Ominous Invoker stream last night with um, a bunch of people after 713 too and some other people. We were playing Fall Guys. Um, that was awesome. And we kept, there was a running joke about Among Us. Because I was a little toasted, and we had a good time. Pizza Mommy got up in there, too. It was a fun time. Operation Ozone Spy Fox is an A. A is still a high grade. Again, I feel kind of... Whoa, this song is loud. Belt it. Again, Pajama Sam 3, the fat man coming in with some jams. That is a real saxophone. Um, Spy Fox 3 was awesome. Uh, I keep saying awesome. It's just, it's it's more of what made the first game great, but it's got some issues in its design. It's, it's one of the first ones that starts to feel kind of rushed because rather than, kind of like my problems with Putt-Putt Travels Through Time, it doesn't have a solid hub world. It just has like a map where you can pick worlds. I didn't like that so much. So, Spy Fox Opera, but it's better than Spy Fox 2. You know what? Let's consolidate this. I feel more fair about this now. Let's get rid of these. Okay. You know what? Let's put Fatty on C, too. I feel more confident in my rankings now. Oh, you're playing Final Fantasy XV. That's all. Yeah, shout out to Video Game Fangirl too. Video Game Fangirl, ardent 
Final Fantasy 15 player. I've got a few Final Fantasy 15 fanatics. Oh, yo, we were playing Type Zero? Damn, I'm about to play Type Zero. No spoilers. But tonight we're, we're playing Gone Home and we're talking about Humongous Entertainment. Uh, Freddy Fish 5. B? It's fine. What's funny is that when I was a kid, I really didn't like the Freddy Fish games. And they're not even still necessarily my favorites. Like if I were to pick up a humongous game, I'd probably pay one of these bad boys up here. Not even this one. There's something about just the the very colorful and underwaterness of it that doesn't make it my favorite. But looking at them as games, they're all pretty good. None of them are, like Freddy Fish 5 is fine. It's again got that map navigation issue. It's just like a recurring thing in Humongous Entertainment at this point. Also, hello, Reiko. How are you doing? Speaking of Final Fantasy 15 fanatics, say that one five times fast. I'll do it. Final Fantasy 15 fanatics. 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 Five times fast. That's not even that hard. That's actually not that hard. Do it 10 times. It says no game, but that's not true. Freddy Fish 5 goes here. It's good but it's not great. You know, it's a C. It's a C. The more I think about it, yo, No Man's Sky, that's fun. Is No Man's Sky okay to play when you have a headache? Um, Freddy Fish 5 is mm, not that great. The more I think about it, actually. It's still okay. It's not bad. This was a B. This was a B. In Pajama Sam's case, it would be B for bad. Comparatively to all the other Pajama Sam games, it's definitely the least good one. But it's not as bad as I expected. It has some real issues with its game design and progression, which become way more apparent in this game, which is maybe a D. Mm, This one's a D because of expectations. These games had come so far, and Pep's birthday surprise is as rudimentary as Putt-Putt joins the parade, which Putt-Putt enters the race felt like a modernized version of Putt-Putt joins the parade, but um, Pep's birthday surprise was just like, what are we even doing? We're just going around this map talking to people. Like that's not what these games are about. They're about, like, solving puzzles and, and figuring things out with your mind. Like, even if they're very basic puzzles, it's about figuring things out for yourself. There was a problem in Pajama Sam 3 where things would progress not because of things that you, the player, figured out, but because you progressed in the story, certain plot points would unlock for you. You might guess entertainment games don't work that way. This game is just like, you do one thing and then the next thing happens, and then you do the next thing and then the next thing happens. And that's just, it's bad. It's bad. There's no F rank, but Beb's birthday surprise is at the bottom for sure. All new, all garbage. H2O. Thank you. Yeah, oh, water's important. So yeah, there's my rankings. I think it's pretty good. I think that's pretty fair. If anybody has any opinions, feel free to share them in chat. I will take a picture of this ranking screen so that I will share it on social media and people can get mad at me. But there she is. I think this was, um, this ended up being a lot more charitable than I expected. I had a really great time playing all these games uh, every Wednesday. And starting next week, I will be playing The Secret of Monkey Island every Wednesday and Thursday. Well, next Wednesday and Thursday. What will I play the week after that? That's for me to know and you would find out.